Welcome to Chillers and Thrillers Extras, paranormal stories that I include just for my YouTube subscribers. Thank you for joining, and let's get started. Ghost Girl, submitted by a user, not your lost love. This happened when I was around seven and living in a small farm town outside of Chicago. Each night, I'd go to bed, and from the ceiling above me, a little girl in the shape of a shadow would watch me. I recall she had this curly, untamed hair and no facial features, but she definitely read as a little girl around my age. I told my very religious mother about this, and at first she said it must be my guardian angel. She also told me not to stay up late reading books with the light on, and that it could do things to my head. I was confused by that because I never read books at night. I figured it couldn't all be bad, as a little shadow girl never did anything to me. She never even spoke to me. After a few months though, I started to have these terrible dreams. I'd go to sleep and see horrific car accident scenes and murders, a man inviting me to go into a maze with him, or a large angry person chasing me. As the chaser dropped their hand on my shoulder, something would pry my eyes open and I'd suddenly be awake in my bed, staring up at the little shadow girl. I started to think something might be up with her. I'd scream and cry and ask my mom to sleep with me, but she didn't want to. My father told me the little girl was just a reflection in the window or a figment of my imagination. They both got tired of me talking about her. The shadow girl watched me until I was probably nine or 10 years old. Then she gradually faded to black into the ceiling where she came from, and I didn't think of her for years. Over time, I chalked her presence up to my wildly out of control imagination. In my 20s, my brother and I decided to go back to the home where we'd grown up to visit. A family we'd known from our town had purchased it, so they were happy to invite us in and let us check out the old haunt again. When we got to what had been my room, the mother of the new family became, for the first time, very sheepish and was hesitant to let us in. She mumbled something about bad spirits and this is the room they don't use. I suspected she may have had an encounter with the shadow girl, and I laughingly said, Wait, have you guys seen the ghost girl too? The woman's face drained of color. That's no ghost, she said. She told me she'd seen the shadow girl in my former room mostly, but also walking around the home and into her children's bedrooms at night. The woman had called her psychic sister-in-law to do a mini exorcism, and the sister-in-law's work had not gotten rid of the spirit entirely, but had relegated her to this room. At the time, the sister-in-law had half-jokingly called the spirit a soul hunter. At this point, I wasn't freaked out so much as amused. I also felt justified that I hadn't been imagining these things all those years ago. When I got home, I called my mom to let her know there had been a ghost girl who'd watch me and the new family had corroborated my experience. During this call, my mother became shifty and obtuse. My mother said that back then there had been several nights where she'd walk past my door at night and see this unusually bright light coming from the sides of and beneath my window. For a time, she thought it was me with my light on reading my American Girl doll series or something and ignored it. But then when I started talking about the little girl, she'd become more curious. One night after seeing this light, she peered into my room and saw a giant glowing orb floating over my body. It wasn't a car light or reflection. This was some kind of mini planet standing guard over my body. In the next moment, I had shot up, suddenly awake, and she'd run to comfort me and tell me to go back to sleep. Since this hadn't been a shadow, she, being deeply religious, assumed that I'd mistaken a friendly angel for a ghost. But now both she and I are convinced whatever she saw was protecting me from the little shadow girl, who was not a girl at all. And every moment I'd shoot up, suddenly awake from whatever horrific nightmare I'd be having, it was that orb thing pulling me back from some predator in a dream. The Bad Friends Submitted by user Mary Est About 11 years ago, myself, my husband, and our one-year-old daughter moved into a house on a quiet cul-de-sac in a great neighborhood. The house had been built in the 1970s and had not been updated, so inside it wasn't overly attractive, but it was spacious with a nice little yard, and it was affordable. 
Weird things happen there, such as things being found in strange places, strange noises, and most people who visited would comment that the house had a creepy feeling. Most of the scary stuff, though, involved my oldest daughter. My daughter had never been an overly good sleeper, but once we moved, she was impossible to get to sleep. Never mind sleep through the night. Our first night in the house, she screamed and cried for hours. Every night, she'd fight sleep as hard as she could. Most nights, she'd wake up screaming in the middle of the night. Eventually, bedtime got slightly less difficult, and I decided the move had probably stressed her out. Six months or so after moving in, I was sitting in the living room while my daughter was taking a nap in her bedroom upstairs, when I heard a huge crash inside. I immediately panicked and ran as fast as I could to get to her room. I opened the door and my daughter's chest of drawers is on the floor, face down. The things that had been on top of the dresser are scattered on the floor, except for a decorative candle that my daughter was holding. I tried to ask her what happened, but she was a year and a half years old, so all she could say was, uh-oh. After this, she started with all kinds of mischievous behavior. Nothing out of the range of normal for toddlers, but I always feel like mentioning this when I talk about the time in this house. She'd break toys, color on the walls, rip papers, smear creams all over walls and carpets. She took a hairpin once and dug the end of it into the brand new TV we had just purchased, causing deep gouges in the screen. When she got old enough to speak more fluently, she would always insist these things weren't her fault, that her bad friends did it or made her do it. We brushed off her mention of bad friends at first. We figured she was just being an imaginative child and we didn't want her to think we believed her excuses. A few months after my oldest turned two, I had another baby girl. My oldest was not thrilled about this and would avoid her sister often. One day, they were both supposed to be napping in their own rooms when I heard footsteps. So I went to check on them. My oldest had climbed into the baby's crib with an extremely sharp pencil and was holding it. My husband and I could not figure out where or how she would have gotten a pencil, especially such a sharp one. We did not own a pencil sharpener or even pencils. Maybe a week later, I found my oldest daughter in the hallway with a bottle of toilet bowl cleaner to her lips. I took the bottle, cleaned her hands and face, then called poison control. When everything settled, I asked her why she was trying to drink that, and she again blamed the bad friends. One day, I was trying to get my daughter to take a bath. She didn't want to, so she ran into my bedroom and closed the door. I didn't hear her locked it, but figured she must have because I could not open the door. It was a flimsy indoor lock that was decades old. Any other time I was locked out of my room, I could open the door just by wiggling the knob a bit. This time, it didn't work. I could hear my daughter laughing on the other side of the door. I asked her to unlock the door, but she just laughed, and then I could hear her jumping on my bed. I took a pen and tried to pick the lock. That didn't work. I tried a few other things to no avail. By this time, my daughter was bored of being in there, I guess, because she knocked from inside and said she wanted out. I told her to unlock the door. I could hear her twisting the doorknob, but still, it didn't open. At this point, we were both panicking. I tried not to let it show, but it was scary, and my little girl was crying that she was scared and wanted out. I called a friend from nearby, and she couldn't get it open either, so we called the fire department. They came and opened it with a crowbar. When it was opened, the door had not been locked. We could not figure out how it was so stuck. One day, my daughter was in her room alone. She was sitting in her closet coloring circles on the wall and talking to herself. I walked in and took away the crayons, then asked her why she was coloring on the walls when she knows she shouldn't. She again gave me the line about the bad friends. At this point, she's almost four years old and has blamed things on her bad friends for years. So I finally decided to ask her about them. She tells me, they're very, very old, and they like to do bad things. They live in her closet and have very white skin. 
very long gray hair and light blue eyes. She tells me they are bad and they don't listen when she tells them to leave her alone. It was really crazy to me how she had so much detail and I got chills listening to her describing these things. She repeated this unchanging story to my husband and other relatives many times. It was always chilling. A couple of days before she was going to start preschool, my daughter came out of the bathroom with her hair hacked off on one side of her head. There were some spots that were totally bald and looked shaved. Some were an inch or two long. It was this awful splotchy mess. My daughter was crying and wouldn't explain how or why she'd done this. She did not have access to scissors. My scissors were still in the cupboard above the fridge and my husband's electric clippers were in a closet in our room. When I went into the bathroom, there was no hair mess. I expected chunks everywhere, but I found none. I also found no scissors and no knife. I figured she must have flushed the hair, but still found it remarkable that there wasn't loose hair on the floor or counter. The whole time we lived there, my oldest had terrible nightmares. We moved when she was five, and immediately, the night screaming stopped. So did most of her mischievous type of behavior. She began sleeping really well. We didn't like to talk too much about how scary it was there and didn't even connect all the stories until last year when my kids came home all excited about a haunted house story they heard. I brought up the old house and the bad friends, much to my husband's dismay. My daughter didn't remember any of the time spent in the house, but she wanted to hear all about it. I told some quick toned down versions and quickly decided that I shouldn't terrify them with more. So we left it and moved on. That night, I woke up in a panic at 3 a.m. My mind was screaming at me that fire alarms were going to go off. I got out of bed and checked on my kids. The house was quiet and fine, but I couldn't calm down. In my head, I just kept thinking about fire and I was certain that the fire alarms were going to sound at any moment. Several hours pass and I'm scrolling Facebook when I come across a comment in my old community's page about a fire. I immediately tense up again. My parents lived in the area, maybe my scary fire thoughts were about them. So I click through the comments to see if anyone mentioned where exactly it was. And then my heart jumps into my throat. My old house was on fire. Pictures of firefighters on the front lawn as smoke billowed out of the house. Thank you for listening. Next week, join me as we explore haunted houses. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know your thoughts and what else you would like to see on the podcast and on the YouTube episodes.